1951, there were four commercial networks on American television in the early days with a schedule of programs that still had quite a few rough edges. If you'd been one of the eight million owners of a TV then, you could have seen a variety of shows that looked like this. the curtain on our TV show. And no matter what we look like, just remember this. I'm cool close, Graham. And I really are. You, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear. I, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear. No. Coochie, coochie, shim, sham, shimmy, it's or the, woman, uh, it's a woman uh, dance. Uh, on the beach at Waikiki. It's a hula. Uh, uh, I want to go back to my little grass shack. Um, uh, uh, where the huma huma nuka. Where the huma huma nuka. <laughs> Good evening. This is Ed Hurley, speaking for the makers of Kraft Mayonnaise, who bring you each week a fine play with a fine cast on the Kraft Television Theater. Stand by for Captain Video. And here's Video Rangers. She falls in love with Emily. She comes from a fastidious family. By that, I mean that her father was fast and her mother was hideous. I can't move! You break my leg! You got a leg, my foot. Nice work, cousin. Now we have a 41-year-old machine tool inspector from Worcester, Massachusetts. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Bill Walker and his musical song. I'd made to read you my favorite psalm. This is Psalm 139. When away we go. Television is funded by a major grant from MCI, offering fiber optic and digital technology for long distance voice and data transmission. MCI, communications for the next hundred years. Additional funding was provided by this and other public television stations, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the Marilyn M. Simpson Charitable Trust. Hello, I'm Edwin Newman. In 1923, three years before he founded the NBC radio network, David Sarnoff sent his colleagues a memo. This is what it said. I believe that television, which is the technical name for seeing as well as hearing by radio, will come to pass in due course. It is the ultimate and greatest step in mass communications, unquote. Well, television is an invention that has fulfilled Sarnoff's prophecy beyond expectation but his was an audacious position back then. The international race for television was a jumble of good intentions and broken promises, chicanery and genius, crushing disappointments, and brilliant discoveries. Just 60 years ago, the idea of travel into space was taken seriously by only a handful of enthusiasts. Most thought of it as an impossible dream best kept to the pages of comic books and Tom Swift. Another idea regarded with similar skepticism by all but a few was the notion of electric pictures, television. Both of these visions became reality with lightning speed. Their technologies now joined with the development of the communication satellite. First proposed by Arthur C. Clarke in a magazine article written in 1945, more than 60 of them now girdle the planet supplying television sound and pictures for hundreds of millions of people. It is an astonishing revolution, all the more remarkable when we realize how far we've come in such a short time. Television began with images like this. 
The year was 1928, and this is one of the earliest surviving television images. Only eight years later, after much struggle, one nation was all ready to begin broadcasting in a big way. It was not the United States. The station goes on the air. November 2nd, 1936. This is the opening of the British Broadcasting Corporation's television service. It was the first regularly scheduled TV with high quality pictures in the world. BBC television was on the air two hours a day, six days a week. Only about 2,000 viewers saw the opening broadcast, but it was a major victory in an extraordinary international race for television that obsessed a handful of pioneers from Tokyo to Berlin and from Leningrad and New York City to London. There was no sudden flash of inspiration that came to a single inventor. The development of television was a series of eureka moments, a natural progression in a world that had seen the birth of the telephone, radio, and motion pictures. television television was born to a tiny audience but from the very beginning tv was a vigorous infant full of show business energy and good old-fashioned schlock a harbinger of things to come idea that existed long before its realization. Tantalizing hints of what it could be were the territory of some clever cartoonists. A century ago, the French artist Robida was amazingly accurate about what television would be like, from home shopping to risque entertainment. Television, he thought, would offer educational courses, provoke sex and violence, and actually bring into our living rooms the horror of war. But television soon became more than a topic for futuristic cartoons. Many men and nations were involved in the race to make TV a reality. Baird definitely was the very first to successfully demonstrate television. And he said very quietly to me, I've come to tell you that I have achieved television. Electronic TV was first invented by our own countryman, Professor Boris Leibovich Rosing, in 1907. Germany was, in fact, the first country to begin an expanded service. The idea was that we were trying to beat the British uh, to get a uh, continuing service of television on the air. At that moment, I was very, very happy. And I said to myself, now for the very first time, we have the basis of television. And all these great minds were working night and day. It was a kind of an international race. 